There are three main ways, in fact four ways, that a woman is divorced in Islam. The first is when a divorce is issued by the man. The second is when she has valid reason and she goes to a court, Shari court or a panel of scholars who has been uh, appointed to nullify marriages and she has the reason, they will look into it, they will address the man, they will see if they can solve the problem. If they cannot, they will award her a divorce, whether he likes it or not. That's in Islam. A lot of people don't know this. So she can actually go out and ask for a divorce and she will get it because you cannot oppress a woman. If you are oppressing her, she has the right to seek out and to get a divorce without your interference. And the third way of doing it is if she has no reason whatsoever, she can actually return what you've given her. And this would only be if you agree, if a man agrees to take back the, the mahar that was given and to issue in return what is known as a divorce of khula. Khula meaning you are actually withdrawing now after you have been given back what you gave her in mahar. And for this reason, there are some people who have very high mahar. You know what is mahar? The, the, the gift that you, the, the groom gives the bride. Some communities have a very high figure that they ask for. And then they say, you know what? You only give it to her if you divorce her. May Allah grant us ease. That's not the right way of doing things, my brothers and sisters. And it's not even correct to have high dowries. In Islam, the simplicity is in the dowry that is token, not something that is big in figures. Although it's permissible to ask for whatever you want, but subhanallah, if there is something simple done with the correct intentions, inshallah, there is greater barakah in that particular marriage. So this was Thabit ibn Qais ibn Shimas. I've mentioned three ways. The fourth way, if a person happens to accuse his wife of adultery in the presence of a court and in the presence of witnesses and swears the oath that is a specific type of an oath and they went through what is known as li'an or mula'ana, it is some specific way of accusing a spouse in the presence of certain number of people and so on and a certain number of times. In that case, the divorce automatically takes place and the two can no longer be together because it's something serious and big. But remember, it would happen if this accusation occurs in the presence of the, the those who are appointed to listen to that type of accusation. Still, we are prohibited from accusing one another of having slept with this one and did this with that one. These are grave statements that we should abstain from, stay away from. This is something we learn or the issue of khula, we learn it from Thabit ibn Qais ibn Shimas al-Ansari radiyallahu an. We need to save ourselves from marital discord by choosing the spouse for the right reasons. It doesn't mean the most handsome person is who you should run after or the most pretty of the girls is the one whom you feel will be the best wife. Not necessarily. You need to look for character, for conduct and for commitment to Allah. If there is commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is known as deen, the religion, the faith, the inclination to Allah. And if there is character and conduct, you will enjoy the person's company. This is what you need. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us and he speaks about divorce. He speaks about the rights of men and women. Many people, they come into the house and the man says, I'm the boss here. I'm the boss here. So you do exactly as I say, you're a woman, you're supposed to be under me and I can tell you anything. Now come, kiss my toes. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Honestly, there are people who do this. There are people who say this. But Allah says, in verse number 228 of Surah Al-Baqarah, Indeed, for them, meaning for the women, are rights just like the men have rights. You need to fulfill each other's rights. Some of them are interlinked. Some of them are the same. Some of them, the man has more rights than women. And some of them, the woman has more rights than the man. This is Allah's plan. So Allah says, fulfill each other's rights, respect each other, help each other. Remember that is your spouse. Make life easy for them, not difficult. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks about the scenario where the marriage is broken down, totally broken down. In the, in the verses of Suratul Baqarah, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains to us how divorce takes place. You only ever issue one talaq. If you really have to divorce your wife or a woman, you need to only issue one talaq, one. A lot of people think, oh, I just rattle out this word thrice and that's the way you divorce a person. That's wrong. That is actually a sinful way of doing things. You need to know that it's wrong. You only ever issue one talaq. And thereafter you are given approximately three months to reconcile if you wish. And if you haven't, then she can marry whom she wants. And as it is, your life continues. But if you have reconciled within three months, Alhamdulillah, you can take her back and you can live once again. And then you issue a second talaq if you do not get along thereafter. After the second one, you only have the last, meaning the third. When the third happens, you cannot get back to her. So people say, I've divorced my wife thrice. I can't get back to her. Why? Well, you tried once, you tried a second time. Now the third time, let someone else try. Subhanallah. Perhaps they will get along with someone else. The third time meaning, once you divorced her, you issued one talaq, and then you lived again, you didn't get along and everything broke down beyond repair. Another talaq went through. It broke down again beyond repair. Now a third time, if she marries someone else, perhaps there will be better qualities in that person. And if without your planning or interference, she happens to be divorced from the second person, it only makes sense that she will now appreciate you. The reason is she will realize this man had 20 weaknesses, but the guy I went to after him had 200 weaknesses. Subhanallah, this man used to smoke 10 cigarettes. That guy used to smoke 10 packets of cigarettes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So then when she comes back, she will appreciate it. So this is one of the very important points that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises. However, when the period of idda is being passed or is passing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you don't take back a woman in order to punish her. Some people say, you know what? I'm going to punish this woman. I'm not going to divorce her. I'm just going to keep her and let her hang. Let her do what she wants. Astaghfirullah. Did you know that she can actually get what is known as a fasqh? Fasqh meaning she can get a nullification of that marriage. She can. She can actually do it without you. Do you know that? If she has legitimate reason. A lot of the women don't know this because we've kept them in the dark. We don't want them to know this. But they can actually get a nullification of that nikah. Allah says, keep them in goodness, on good terms, or release them on good terms, but don't hold them back in order to punish them. That is mentioned, verse number three, 231 of Surah Al Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا Do not hold them back in order to harm them, in order to punish them. Release them, let them go, let them go happily with a smile. Perhaps they will regret. Perhaps they will say, no, this man was really a good man. Look, he released me and I'm gone home. Subhanallah, he didn't harm me. He didn't hurt me and he didn't hold me back to punish me. So Alhamdulillah, it was something good. However, let's remember my brothers and sisters, we save ourselves from the punishment of Allah. When you hold back a woman knowing that you don't want her, but you don't want to release her, Allah will punish you at some stage in this world and the next. So Allah says the third time you can't reconcile. Why? Because now you must marry someone else. When you marry someone else, you realize that, oh, this new guy is such a lovely guy. Alhamdulillah. Wow. This other guy used to beat me up. This man don't even raise his baby finger. Alhamdulillah. Wow. Alhamdulillah. But if it's the other way around and this man, the first guy, he might have sworn you, but he never beat you up. And the second guy starts beating you up. You're going to tell yourself, oh Allah, help me to go back to that guy. Oh Allah, I regret. I really regret. Oh Allah, help me. So Allah says, no problem. If the divorce goes through from this man, guess what? You're allowed to go back to him. Why? 
so that you will now appreciate him because he had 20 weaknesses. The new guy had 200 weaknesses. So that's the whole purpose of not being allowed to go back to the same guy unless you've been married to someone else and without anyone's interference out of normal uh, relationships, not being, not getting along and being divorced because of proper reasons. Then you go back to the first guy. That is the proper way. But some people, like I said last week, they do what is known as halala. Oh, this guy issued three talaqs. Now, do you know what? Let's go and do some halala. What's a halala? The hadith says, لَعَنَ اللَّهُ الْمُحَلِّلَ وَالْمُحَلَّلَ لَا Allah has cursed the one who does halalas and the one whom it was done for. Where people say, oh, divorce thrice. Okay, do you know what? Uh, let's organize one of my connections. You can just marry him. And uh, the, the next morning, he'll just divorce you. And then you just wait for the iddah and we'll get married back again. Are you playing with the law of Allah? Do you think that that's a joke? Do you think that that's the law of Allah? Astaghfirullah. You are cursing yourself and everyone else. It's over. The game is done. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. I know, I know of a real life case in the UK where there was a guy who used to do this and one day he married someone. It was one of the people's wives, ex-wives who was divorced and he didn't divorce her and today they've got four kids together. And he says, wow, she's the best of all the women I've ever had. Astaghfirullah. And that other man no longer talks to him. This is a joke. It's actually such, an, such a great insult. It's dropping and degrading a woman to lower than an animal. Astaghfirullah. How can you do that? How can you even think that that's Allah's law and His command and His instruction? Never. Don't play with the rules of Allah. Life is too short. We go back to Allah and we regret. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. May Allah strengthen us. So Allah says, Lodge them in a section of where you dwell out of your means and do not harm them in order to oppress them. Now, out of your means would also include that in the case where you cannot lodge them in your own home because of how small it is, you may want to pay their rental for where they are. And if they, are, if they do happen to be in their own parents' homes, for example, you may want to chip in slightly uh, in, order to, uh, to, uh, in order to show at least that you have been concerned about someone you were married to. The problem with us is when divorce occurs, it is so ugly, so, so ugly. Sometimes we need to learn from the non-Muslims where they divorce, but it's not that ugly. It's not so ugly that, you know, you, you treat a person like they're worse than dogs and cats and animals. Astaghfirullah. Sorry, take the cat out of the equation. But at the same time, uh, it's very bad. We as Muslims should be behaving in a more civilized manner. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, when divorce happened, they actually told others that, look, I divorced this woman, but I really think she's a good woman for you. Perhaps you might get along with her. We, I didn't get along because we were different and so on. And the people appreciated it and they got married. Amazing. Imagine someone hooking up their ex with another really, really good guy. Subhanallah. I think with us, I don't even want to complete the sentence. So Allah says, and if they should be pregnant, then spend on them until they give birth, which means you have to look after them. Medical expenses and everything else has to be taken care of by this man. It is his child. And guess what? When they happen to give birth, then Allah continues. So it doesn't just stop there because now they have your child. Listen, Allah says, if they breastfed for you, now that they no longer your wives, if they breastfed for you, then give them their payment and confer among yourselves in the acceptable way. Which means if your wife, your ex-wife is looking after your kids, guess what? Islam says you've got to pay her for that. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. I think a lot of us probably wouldn't even have imagined that this would be the case. Many women don't want the payment. All they want is a bit of respect. That's it. Nothing else. Women in general, they're not greedy. All they want is acknowledgement, appreciation, and a slight bit of respect. Once that happens, they don't mind giving you the whole world. Believe me, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deeper understanding. The problem is when we become ugly and dirty and we become people who don't appreciate, then everything changes. People... It seems like they've become materialistic and they're not. But from the, from the perspective of a male, it is important that the males adopt the law of Allah and make this payment. And let's not be ridiculous, right? I'm breastfeeding your child. If you take a look, it's going to cost you $3,000 a month. <laughs> come on, come on, relax. So because Allah knows that some people might be ridiculous, do you know what he says? 
Listen to what he says. Let's go back. And if, he, if they breastfed for you, then give them their payment and confer among yourselves in the acceptable way. But if you are in discord, then they may breastfeed for him another woman, meaning for the, for the father. So the father may look for someone else to breastfeed the child, to look after the child. Wow, in that case, what happened? In that case, well, it was too expensive with the mother. I couldn't afford it. So I actually looked for someone else who was cheaper. So this is why I say it's not an issue about, of money. It's an issue of respect, appreciation, acknowledgement, understanding the cost. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, sometimes the rules and regulations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid down are not understood by us. Sometimes they are not understood by a few of us. It is important that we ask in order to understand. And even if we don't understand, it's our duty as believers to adopt the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, people ask a question. When a woman is divorced or when she has lost her spouse through death, she has become a widow. In that particular case, or in both those cases, she has to spend a period of time known as the idda, indoors or within her own property or her home. Now, some people ask questions and they begin to say, why is this rule and regulation there? The truth is, it is there in order to protect you, in order to save yourselves from rumor, from various other issues and problems. There is a verse in Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verse number 234 makes mention of a woman who has lost her husband through death. She has become a widow. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ يُتَوَفَّوْنَ مِنْكُمْ وَيَذَرُونَ أَزْوَاجًا يَتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنْ يَتَرَبَّصْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنْ those from amongst you who have passed away leaving behind wives those wives should spend a period of idda in meaning alone four months and ten days now the question is why that's a question obviously we may not know a lot of the reasoning before people used to say it's to ensure that the woman is not expecting, she hasn't conceived, she's not pregnant and various other reasons. But let me explain when you've lost your husband and you're so excited, you come out of the home, you're dressed up, you have perfume on and all this jewelry and so on. I'm sure people might start doubting. There might be a rumor. Was she involved somehow in this man's death? So to save you from that, Allah says, spend a period of time thinking, pondering. It is not a prison sentence. You don't have to be within one room. You don't have to be indoors in the sense that if you have a property, you're allowed to come out and for necessity, you're allowed to leave the home. You might ask, what is that necessity? That necessity is determined by you. If you think it is absolutely necessary for me to leave the home right now, then you leave that home and come back as soon as you can on condition that you're not going out to socialize, to have a laugh, to go out perhaps for something that is just going to be chit chat and so on because it will give you a time to ponder to reflect to collect yourself to realize that there is something coming ahead i'm going to be living now without this husband of mine who's been there for so long and thereafter you come out you emerge from this four month and ten day period a person who is already guided a person who has some form of a plan you now know where you want to be, what you want to do and so on. For those who have jobs, for example, and they are the breadwinners of the home, they might lose their jobs if they leave that particular job for four months and for four months and 10 days. The scholars have given permissibility to go out if necessary, even to work. For medical reasons, you can leave. If you are the only person, say, for example, who can take the school, the children to school, for example, and in some countries, nobody else can do that for you. You are permitted to leave because that is a necessity. 
but where it is unnecessary, you, you should remain indoors. Like I said, you will be protected from rumor. You will be protected from people's comments, from people saying things. The worst feeling is you're trying to deal with the death of your husband and people are accusing you of involvement in his death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us guidance. Remember, never utter words that are hurtful. And at the same time, never give people reason to utter words that are hurtful. So my brothers and sisters, it is in order to save yourself from all of this type of statement and or this type of situation. Some people, when they are on that low, the period is a very low period in terms of emotions and so on. You find predators who come in and say soothing, cool words and on the rebound, as it were, we tend to fall in love, but it's not falling in love. We want to marry immediately without realizing this is wrong. If you give your time, if you give yourself that time, you will come to understand. You will be able to look clearly. You will be able to study and so on. So there are many points of benefit for this beautiful ruling from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think the difficulty today is we've made it out as though it is a prison sentence for this female. And that is why a lot of the women tend to argue and they tend to debate. What is this idda all about? My beloved sisters, remember if Allah has ordained something, if Allah has prescribed something, it can only be the best for you, especially in this case, clearly mentioned in the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. May Allah protect our widows. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to marry those who are widows. Many of us, when we want to marry, we look for the youngest and the best of the lot, not realizing that there is great reward in looking at those who are widows, perhaps. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. The question is about divorce on the telephone by text. Divorce by text message. Like social and, uh, media? Yeah, text well, yeah, let, let, let me explain a little bit. Sorry, don't, exp don't worry about explaining. I'm sure you get it, all right? Don't mind. Thanks. Question. And three times. It says so, three times. The so, divorce is three times on the phone for the first time. Sorry, I can't get you. The divorce is three times. He said it is three times divorce okay. just by text. Is that all right? Oh, three times. Three divorce tries by text message. My brother, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, uh, you need to know one thing. Habibi, when you marry a woman, you marry her in the name of Allah. You marry her in the masjid preferably, although the nikah would be valid if done in another place. You have witnesses, you have a wali who has given her and entrusted you with her. She is somebody's daughter, perhaps somebody's sister, perhaps some loved family member. She might have big families as well and so on. You need to understand even if you did not like something she may have done and you did not get along, you will honor her and respect her for the sake of Allah and the name of Allah that you took when you actually took her into your marriage. So to divorce her as though she is a dog is actually something very hurtful and antisocial. It is something that a human being should not do, let alone a Muslim. So let's understand that when a person does want to divorce their spouse, it needs to be done with respect. We have a culture throughout the world among the Muslims where people just utter this talaq when they are angry and then they come back to the ulama and they say, what has happened? I normally say, after you have fired the gun, you know, when you got the gun, you needed to know what the trigger was for. You got a gun, you did not know what the trigger was for. You shot three bullets straight into the chest. And after she is dead, you come to the ulama and say, is there any possibility of this woman becoming alive once again? That's what has happened. So why use that particular way? Why would you need to text when subhanallah, there is a more dignified way of doing things? I am not saying that a text is not valid. There is a detail regarding its validity. But I am first introducing the answer by letting you know that it's the wrong way of doing things respectfully. The respectful way would be to try and solve the matter, to call perhaps some family members to try and resolve. That's the first step. Thereafter, family members would be aware that there is a problem and thereafter they would guide you or guide her and guide both of you perhaps to whatever they believe is the solution. It may, if no solution was found, be followed up by a talqa. A talqa meaning you ask the ulama. This topic of ours is not 
to do with divorce, but we will deal with the question because it came in. But the details of divorce, you need to learn them when you get married. One day I was invited to a wedding. And when I was invited to a nikah, uh, I started speaking about talaq. And the people were quite upset. Because they told me, we invited you for the wedding here, and you are talking about divorce. I said, look, if we don't speak about it now, when will we speak about it? It's like giving someone a motor vehicle, and they don't know what the brakes are for. They don't know what the accelerator is for. They don't know which way you are going to turn if you move the steering this side, that side. I rather seize the opportunity. Here is your vehicle. We need to make sure your driver's license is okay. So the same applies when you get married. It's not wrong to educate yourself. In fact, you have to know what divorce is all about. No scholar will ever tell you, just send an SMS. No scholar will say that. Now that it has happened, the question is, who sent the SMS? How was it sent? What was the intention when it was sent? It's authenticity. It's easy for someone to pick up my phone, your phone, anyone's phone, find out. People say, hubby. People say wifey, people say whatever other beautiful name on the phone. I hope it is actually your wife, please. They have these, these uh, you know, so it's easy for someone to pick it up and just type out to say I divorce you and so on and send it to them and they get the message and they are in shock. But it was sent by someone else. So we need to authenticate and verify. Someone might say no, it was their number. Ask them. We need to ask them, confirm, was it really this person? If they confirm it to say yes, then that confirmation would actually be taken into consideration when the decree is issued as to the validity of that particular nikah. If it was done properly in the same mind from a person who knows what he's doing and he had the intention of doing it and he issued it in that particular way and he confirms it, then the ulama will tell you that that is a valid divorce, although it was the wrong way of doing things. I hope you understand the difference between the two. You know, it's the wrong way of doing things, meaning if your child does something wrong and you beat them up until they go to the hospital, you might correct that thing, but it was the wrong way of doing things. It will result in other problems. But if your child did something bad and you spoke to them, you rectified, you admonished them, you perhaps might have punished them by taking away their iPad, you will have a more powerful impact. So you did it the right way. Same applies to this talaq. I hope I've helped you with that answer, my brother. Uh, that's the best I could actually say that there is validity of that under certain circumstances if it is authenticated. But there is no blanket ruling to say every talaq given on, on SMS is actually valid because we don't know who sent it, how they sent it it, why they sent it and so on. It needs to be verified by the ulama or in a country where you have a qadi or a system that looks into these matters, look into them. I normally do not answer questions of talaq very quickly because I believe it's a serious matter. So many times the husband says, this is what happened and the, the answer comes and the wife tells you, no, that's not what happened, it is something else. So you need to get both parties, they need to say what happened and the, you need to know the details. If witnesses need to be called in, they will be called in and then a ruling will be issued. Please take the matter of talaq very seriously. Don't just issue it. When you are angry, that's the last thing you should ever do. You just found out something really bad. The last thing a Muslim should do is to blurt out the words of talaq please don't do that it's not the right way of doing things wallahu a'lam